rain, I go away, I acid jazz on a rainy day. I know sometimes that I don't make any sense, but it's the thought that counts. This is a 1949 Gestetner 120 mimeograph machine, and um, I paid $20 for it in 1969 or 1970 in Montreal. Once you own your own press, you have you can print whatever the, whatever you want. You can do whatever you can say whatever you want. You're not at the mercy of anybody. The whole terminology of fanzine and everything like that comes from science fiction fans. They created the whole genre. They created all the terminology. They created um, all the craft, all the tricks that I know about printing with this machine. I learned from science fiction fans when I was a kid. 1992 I was also trying to establish myself here on the West Coast as a graphic designer so I thought there's got to be a way to combine my love of self-publishing and poetry with uh, trying to make a living as a graphic designer so I thought why don't I just use this as a vehicle to advertise my graphic design and I'll kind of you know make something really cool and uh, put some poetry and things in there so I sent it out to um, people in the industry and also the self-publisher in me kind of went, you know, I should send it out to some bookstores as well, just for the hell of it, see what kind of reaction I get. Well, the reaction to the graphic design part was not very good, but people loved the poetry. Little things that mean so much. A quiet word, a tender touch. All the above, plus. All my love. As soon as email caught on, you gotta remember, like, when I started this email and World Wide Web, it's not really happening in 1992, but as soon as uh, email became prevalent, I would start getting emails back. And, and um, one guy found found a copy of, of Ralph on a Toronto subway. Um, another person found it in England. The theory of mine that it's it's um, you get back what you put out. There's a lot of good people out there, and and uh, it, it's good it's good to sow some some goodness into the world. Well, I'm sitting in the sun, drinking wine, having fun. Goodbye, Jack. Kerouac. It was because of Ralph that I had the opportunity um, to do a spoken word performance at all, in a way, because he had invited me to, um, you know, share, uh, be, be a part of the bill that he had put together. And, uh, you know, Ralph and his bongo beat. And it was highly, highly enjoyable to uh, watch Ralph perform with his band. <laughs> Et voilà, dans tes bras, assez vite, c'est comme ça. C'est à rire ce désir que je t'aime, voilà. But what I find too is there's, there, but the whole stereotype of the bongos and the turtlenecks and all that that's all like Hollywood like um, in the late 50s like it's Audrey Hepburn funny yeah, face yeah and but in, in, in the beginning like the beatniks were always the bad guys in movies you mm -hmm. know like yeah. they'd be like oh my god she's been kidnapped by the beatniks yeah <laughs> those crazy guys you know the first beatnik I saw was probably in 1962 I went in to buy my comics and outside was this really cool girl like like looking like the total beatnik all in black, the black turtleneck and the black hair and the sunglasses and it was like this revelation right I'm like I'm just a kid and I see this person and I'm like wow what is that and I had no idea that she was a beatnik or anything like that until many years later when I was a teenager. It's funny that now in, in as we get into the new millennium there's this incredible fascination still with the beats and their legacy and, and their um, 
I guess, contribution to popular culture. And a blanket of Saturday sky, there is a new soul asleep. Asleep, asleep, in the arms of love, there is a new soul asleep. I guess it was probably 1985 on my third album, Call of the Wild. Ralph and I ended up doing a cross-country promo trip together to promote that album, and I was, I mean, we couldn't get that album played to save our lives. <laughs> it was just so funny walking into these radio stations, because one thing you got to know about Ralph, he's, you know, he's Mr. Integrity. He calls up spade a spade. One thing I found, like, like I had, like when I went working for major record labels, I was like, okay, I've, I've infiltrated the big company now, yeah. I've, I've come from this, yeah. and yeah. what happens is the bands don't care, they're like, we don't care, we know more than you. I could have stayed at a record company, and, and, and I, none of this would exist now, I wouldn't be here. I saw that my, my whole reasoning was wrong, I had made a very terrible mistake. Um, I wanted to help people, but people didn't want my help. As soon as I realized that I, instead of being this like guy that could help people, I was I was reviled. I kind of went, you know what? Screw all you. I quit. Bye bye. It wasn't until I actually saw him perform his stuff at the Railway Club with his band, with his striped shirt and his excellent backdrop, and that I realized that what he was doing was absolutely authentic and uh, was was the, the real thing, the real words that are, that are inside him are coming out in this crazy beatnik way. Everybody has to go home sometime, even if it's just to hang around. Everybody has to say hello sometime, even if it's just to say goodbye. Thank you for taking the time to watch and enjoy our Ralph Sublime. He makes Vancouver more divine and makes us happy. He's so fine!